Okay, we're going to be making a placket, a tailored placket for a sleeve. I went and found this instruction right here to make this placket right here. It's actually called a gauntlet. Now, this particular pattern has you make two separate pieces in which to sew on your slit right here. Pattern Master Boutique actually turns it into one piece, which I kind of like. It's this pattern right here. I like this better, so I've been using it. So we're going to go ahead and make a gauntlet like this and through here. And make a real pretty opening for the sleeve. Okay, so let's get to it. Okay, here I have all these plackets pressed and folded already. This is your pattern from Pattern Master Boutique. And here is the placket when it's flat. And I've gone ahead and folded and pressed a quarter inch on the, this edge. Folded this over so it's a quarter inch up there. And quarter inch here and then folded that over. So now what we're going to do is to pin this to the sleeve. I'm dropping everything. Now in order to pin this to the sleeve you're going to pin it from the wrong side. Get one sleeve out of the way and we need to find where we put this. Here's the point. Get it about halfway. I should have marked this on the wrong side, but I didn't. Now your small edge, here's your large, your tall edge, your small edge is going to go towards the narrow side of this sleeve. You've got your vent right here and you've got this short side of the sleeve hem. Your short side is always going to go on the short side here. So you want this long side towards the greater width of your sleeve and put this on from the back and what I'm doing I've drawn my stitching lines and then my slash line so I'm putting my pin in the center of my slash line sticking it in the center there now we need to go under here and find this center point in the slash line and line it up with that pin underneath now I can go in here and I know this is straight Now you do want to angle your pin up to this point. Okay, let's put the other one on. Now, in order to get this placket looking right, it's called a gauntlet technically, but in order to get it looking right, you are going to be using a lot of pressing. You will be doing a lot of ironing on it.
Now if you'll notice, this point right here is actually a quarter inch from this cut edge. So you will always have a quarter inch seam allowance on this, which makes it easy with my presser foot. Okay, now we're going to go to the sewing machine. So hold on. Okay. We turn you around. Okay. Now we're just going to stitch. along these two outside lines. <clears throat> Stitch up to the pivot point, even if you have to go and adjust your stitch length to get to it. got this little handy dandy iron here. It's just a, like a little quilter's iron by Clover. I'm putting it on a medium setting because I can sit here. I got this press pad with my garment steamer. It's nice and <coughs> thick. And this is a Teflon coated cover on it so I'll be able to use this to iron. I also put my little iron on that to uh, keep it from burning anything. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and slash this guy up. In the middle. Make sure you leave a generous ear. Just like a welt pocket, you're going to cut into and up to that corner. And it really is okay on this particular instance to go through it if you have to. I try not to, but it's really not going to matter because all that's going to be enclosed. All right, let's do the next one. Sometimes it just works out. Now, unlike a welt pocket, first of all, you're not going to have this closed up here. Secondly, you will be stitching across the edges. On a welt pocket, you would not stitch down when you were attaching. This is a slightly different application. I might end up taking this to the ironing board because I don't think my little iron is hot yet. Now, 
Not quite. We can do a little bit with it though, I think. First thing we have to do is get the machine out of the way. Because all of this next is going to be turned to the front. I do like to go ahead and press it down a little bit. You can finger press this too. Most seamstresses will just put these on without any pins or they just finger press them. And there's that one. Now do be careful with this because this little rod here is hot. It's not really encased well. I should have had this uh, guard all the way up, but they didn't. And there might be a reason for that. I have no idea. Okay. Now this all has to be turned to the front. First thing you're going to work on is your under placket, which is this. And you're going to fold this over so that it barely meets over your sewn edge. That way you can go ahead and put a top stitch on it. And you can feel where this is ending up when you roll it. We're going to have to press that a little bit better. Now, sometimes I will go ahead and baste this down. Now, up here, where your ear is, make sure it comes, you can stick this guy kind of underneath it. Your under placket can go underneath your ear because your ear that you cut is going to go on top here and then this is going to come out and cover it up like that. So you want to get your ear down. What I do, let's top stitch this part first. Do a little bit of press in here. Lordy, ain't it hot in here today. Oh my gosh. I'm breaking the dew. I'm going to go left needle position. And remember, pull that ear out. Like this. Pull it. Give it another press. We'll take it to the steam iron here in a minute before we do the top stitching of this outer placket. Okay, so we've got that all done. Now your ear. I'd like to turn this back right here at the edge. Pull your placket all the way over, and what you're going to do is to fold that ear down. See how I've got that right there? Let's see if you can see it. Press 
right here. I folded this up right here. And I've got my ear right here. So I'm going to stick a pin here. Now I'm going to sew all across here. Pull this down a little bit, but I want to catch that ear in there. I've lost my whole my little stand for that iron. It's here because I've just seen it not too long ago. But I can't find it now. So I have to use that as a stand for now. Now this doesn't matter because it's gonna be held under. Just and I just want to stitch it down enough to hold it. Now here we get to a little tricky part, and we've got to actually get in here and create the point. Now see how that's falling over in line right what, real well? I'm going to go ahead and iron it without the pad. And I need to go ahead and trim some stitches or some allowance. Let's do this. This is going to fold over to this side. And you do want to straighten this out because this is folded down right here. So you might want to make a little clip into here. Not, well, not much. So that gets folded down. This gets folded over. This gets folded over. And you're going to pin it just over the edge again, like you did on the under placket. Here is where we need to do some more pressing. We need to take this little tab going to fold him down like this, and then I'm taking and mitering my corners right here. And then we go to the other side. you want is a little indentation. Okay, so here we're going to go ahead and trim this point. And like you trim any point, first you're going to cut it off square at the tip. And I only cut about a quarter inch off this. That leaves me a good three-eighths of an inch seam line. And I'm just going to diagonal clip here. I can get it with my dull scissors. I'm about ready to spend some money on some new gingers. Pretty ones. And florals or whatever. I'm about ready to spend some money on some new scissors here. Okay, now we're going to go flat at the top and then tuck in these ends. That'll give us a nice, perfectly mitered corner. Now we're going to go with small pins. And just one in the tip.
<coughs> simply because it's going to be easier to stitch this top stitch right here if it's all held together with a baste. looks kind of wonky right here so I gotta turn it under a little bit more by hand to get it straight now we're gonna go flat why I basted it is to make sure that my point stays in the center here because it can shift on you and get wonky so I take a stitch right up to the middle of that point let's turn line yourself back up down here <coughs> Now what I like to do is to take one of my big ball pins and kind of close it up at the bottom so I know that I'm on a perfectly straight field here. Now you're not going to be sewing all the way down. You're only going to be sewing to right about, let's see, I got that way too low. So I'm only going to go down past where this little tag, this little loose spot is. So that means I'm only going to go down right about here. And you can feel it with your finger. Okay. Now, in order to stitch this, we're going to go left needle position again right on the edge now I am lining up my general purpose zigzag foot there is an opening right here where the needle will go okay so I am lining up the edge of my fabric to the edge of this opening on the left side there's numerous marks that you can use in order to guide yourself for this particular application I'm using that mark now 
Now even though I've got this all pinned together up here, it's only attaching underneath to this. It's not attaching to the underneath, even though I'm doing, it looks like it might be, but I'm not. Try to get it right on the edge. final back tack. So on one sleeve you're going to start from your crosswise and on the other sleeve you'll start from the bottom. Figure that one out. Now let's take the basting stitches out. Give it a little quick press with our hand presser. And we probably should get over there with a the steam iron too. At this point, you can go ahead and eh, I'll just use this as an example. You could go ahead and put a button here. You would put your buttonhole on this side and then your button underneath here. Or you can leave it off. You could also just sew a button on top so it doesn't open up past this point. I'd probably go 5 eighths to 3 quarters of an inch down maybe right about here. It still gives ample room for the opening here. All right, let's finish up that other one right quick because I'm timing myself on how long it takes me to do two. I'll be real honest with you, I've never done this before. I've always done a straight slit with placket. This thing works real good. It really does give you a nice crisp press.
think I need, need to get a cone stand, don't you? Bug. Ugh. Now we're going to go right needle position. Right on the edge. I'm just pressing all that down real well, especially this. I need a better sewing machine table, I think. a new show out. I don't know if you all know about it. It's called The Bastard Executioner. And I like shows that actually have some historical significance or truth to the matter. And this one is based in the 1500s when Edward I of England, Edward Longshanks, you know, from uh, Braveheart, after he died, and his son Edward II, a little prissy boy, takes power. And it's about the Welsh rebellions. Did I already do that one? I did one side. Yeah, I did this. So let's do some clipping. yourself a healthy turn under and just kind of put that across. Flip it down at the tip, turn it under on the sides to get a nice clean miter.
needs to be pulled out just a little bit more or tucked under a little bit more. At this point, you can go ahead and put a big needle or a big pin on the bottom to hold it together. And then we're going to work this point. this right here for now and then work out that point. Okay. This is irritating me. Here. Here. Sometimes you really have to get in here and work it a little bit in order to get yourself a nice clean point. My dog's out barking. Actually, this guy should got a little bit. Either this one has to go further down or this one has to come up. Let's try that. Okay. Needle and thread. I don't know if I've got enough thread here to do a base, but we'll try it. But all of your basting will show up on the away from this under, uh, where it was turned under. Yeah, I can't talk today. Okay, we're going to be going to right. Here.
Okay, on this one, we are going to start from the crosswise top. And I'm going to go in the middle of my base with a right hand needle position. starting at the wrong end, but you don't have to work. Now, if my point is still kind of wonky, I can come in here and still mess with it some. It kind of looks okay. That's better. What you can do is come back to your crossbar, do it again. And then come down here. And I'm gonna actually change my needle position to a left midstream. take them to the ironing board. That looks pretty good. I'm happy. For the most part. Technically this should have come a little bit further over here. But I think we'll be okay. Okay, so these two are done. I'm gonna press them up. Be right back. Okay, and we're here at the ironing board, ironing these up. Fuzzies. Very, very pretty gauntlet. Tailored, ta tailored placket. Now, if you wanted to, if you had, if you could, you could come in here with some pinking shears and get that, which is probably what I'll do. If you have enough room, you could actually probably go into the uh, serger before you sewed this top stitch down here. You could take this and flip it up and go into the serger with it. But I think I'm just going to get. Uh, my pinking shears out after it. Okay, that's it. That's all you don't have to do to do a gauntlet. And like I said, you can put a button and buttonhole on it. I hope that this helped. And you can now create some very, very lovely tailored shirts. So thanks for watching. Y'all have a great day. Goodbye.